Now, to give you a taste of what is on the inside, I want to read one short piece from the chapter on substrate. It is about buffers and hydrogen sulfide. Well, hello. Jump right on in. You're at Father Fish. Hello, this is Father Fish. I am sitting in our new fish room in our new warehouse in Salisbury, Maryland. We are so happy to be here. We will be opening for the first time ever a fish store so unique that it has no precedent. It is a store based on helping our customers build natural aquariums. That is what we are all about. And we are all about helping you, both online and here in our new shop. One of the most important and vital resources we have been developing for the last two years is a book. It is based on our research and our experience over the last 25 years with natural aquariums. The book will be available online in September of 2024, and we hope will be available in print by January of 2025. This is a remarkable piece of information because it is going to blow the lid off the entire industry. It will result in a fundamental change in the way most fish keepers keep fish. It will move us away from, well, let me not get into it too far. Instead, I want to read to you from the forward to our new book, The Natural Aquarium. Aquariums became possible with the invention of sheets of glass, so-called floating glass, in the mid-1800s. Very, very quickly, Shops opened up all over the world. London, New York, Paris for the epicenters. They sprang up clubs everywhere. There was an explosion of fascination with keeping aquatic animals and plants in glass boxes. The first aquariums did not have pumps, filters, lights, or even aeration. They were natural biomes with a little bit of mud from a creek or sand from the shore, a plant or two, and whatever river could be collected. Minnows, crayfish, shrimp, snails, clams, all populated these first fish tanks. Nearly a hundred years later, it became possible to bring wild fish from around the world into these aquariums. Today, we can keep some of nature's most extraordinary aquatic creatures alive and healthy in our living room. However, there is a problem with the tropical fish industry. Something important has been lost in the past 50 to 75 years. Mechanical and chemical products have become the centerpiece of the industry. And as a result, the natural approach to fish keeping has fallen into disrepute. 
before the advent of chemicals and complex electrical equipment, anyone who wanted to keep fish alive had no difficulty doing so. They added a little dirt to the bottom of their tank, sprinkled a bit of sand on top, planted a few aquatic plants from a local brook and added a fish or two. These simple systems were always successful. Today, that is no longer true. Excited families new to the hobby will spend hundreds of dollars on equipment, chemicals, and processed food to set up their first aquarium. Their first fish tank will become a foul mess of dead fish and rotting plants. With more chemicals in hand, they will try again and fail again. Less than 10% of those folks will overcome bad advice and unnecessary equipment. Some will find their way to Father Fish and his friends where they will le learn a simple system that guarantees their success. In the last hundred years, the fish hobby has become a major economic engine for manufacturing, farming, and sales. Some luminaries have been at the heart of moving the hobby forward. One such person I have revered since childhood is Merrill Cohen, founder of Aquarium Products in Baltimore, Maryland. Among the many countless contributions made by Merrill was one that remains little heralded. In 1960, Merrill Cohen, who owned Aquarium Products, worked with a man in Singapore. His name was Li Chan Eng. Li Chan Eng discovered how to keep saltwater fish and coral alive in a tank with no filtration, no water current, no electricity, and no light. He was just sitting out in the open. He installed these large tanks, a thousand gallons or more, in hotel lobbies, and they were filled with light. Merle Cohen brought this technique back to the U.S. He displayed it in the early 1960s at the Tropical Fish Manufacturers Convention called the APPMA. From that event, GARF, the Geothermal Aquatic Research Foundation, an organization sitting on top of a thermal vent in central Idaho, began raising coral in open systems with no electricity except the device that was pumping the water out of the ground. They worked miracles. Next was Takashi Amana, a Japanese nature photographer who discovered he could grow fish and plants in a freshwater aquarium by putting mud at the bottom of it. Following in Amano's footsteps was the scientist and fish enthusiast Diana Walstead, who researched dirt at the bottom of the aquarium. Walstead discovered that the dirt layer capped with gravel leached into the water column, depleting it in about a year. There were two problems here. First, the soil did not have stinging power, and second, gravel allowed water to leach out nutrients. Finally, around 2000, I put it all together. I added a supplement to the soil when it was first put down, thanks to Almano, who did the same thing with small packets of minerals, and Wallstead who described the plant requirements. I created a supplement that provides a long, 
eternal source of needed minerals. Then I added sand to cap the soil. This prevents leaching and allows nutrients to survive in the soil until the system can fully cycle. A full description of this process and the materials is included in this book. Now, to give you a taste of what is on the inside, I want to read one short piece from the chapter on substrate. It is about buffers and hydrogen sulfide, a scourge and a fear to many of those who think about setting up a deep substrate system. I wrote this in the book. Not everything in the book is written by me. In fact, Truly, very little is. I have found, however, that everything there is consistent with what I have been doing, and I've learned so much in the process because I've stayed on board with these scientists and researchers who worked through all of the steps and all of the environment, the processes, the procedures, the systems, the chemicals, the plants and animals involved in this system. Takashi Amano was keenly aware of this issue, that deep substrate systems become acidic and create hydrogen sulfide, a serious toxin. This is preventable by ensuring the substrate contains substantial buffers. Amano developed a series of additives in small packets to be used for the deepest portion of the substrate. One of these was buffers. He also included other elements that are important for plant substrate and the health of the plants. Iron and potassium, for example, are critical and can be quickly depleted in a fixed system. Manu understood the vital importance of increasing the availability of certain elements to ensure their constant availability for plant growth during the process of the system cycling, such that all of the elements cycle through all of the life systems until they are fully linked to each other. To overcome nutrient depletion in a Wallstead system, I began designing a single package that would accommodate the elements Amano considered important and overcome the problems of dirt substrate becoming a quickly depleted material. I added about 12 different elements and organics to a supplement. They were of sufficient quantity to persist in the soil for several years. This is long enough for natural elements to completely cycle in the system. Not only have we overcome the danger of acidics in substrate, but we have also ensured the nutrient levels, that they will be sustained long enough for the natural process of elements to return to the soil. We do so simply by adding an adequate amount of buffers. That prevents the soil from becoming depleted of its elements that prevent acidification. This book results from two years of dedicated study by a team of research scientists and experienced fish keepers. They have examined natural fish keeping and discovered the science behind its success. Every aspect of keeping fish naturally has been carefully examined and put to the test of rigorous scientific study. Repeatedly, the researchers found the simplicity of natural fishkeeping is in line with the natural world. 
Learning to depend on nature is the bedrock of this approach. But this work is so much more than the chronicling of enthusiastic hobbyists. It is the enduring work of Tommy Dendam, who without him, the approach that brought about this work could not have happened. There are others who have made significant contributions to this work. Some are acknowledged as authors. Others are artists, photographers, editors, and enthusiasts. Many have been active participants in the process. So with this, I offer to you a way forward. It's something I've been working on for years and have published nearly 2,000 videos. Developed a Discord server that serves some 20,000 people. Started a store that sells these supplements and additives. Indeed, the soil itself. And provides a resource for plants that have never seen CO2 and have grown in the water. So here we are, standing at the precipice of a breakthrough in our hobby. We hope you will keep an eye out for the book. It will be available for pre-order very soon, within a week or two. We encourage you to join us in the Discord in our Father Fish Shoal and become a part of a wonderful community of thousands of people who've learned how to maintain their aquariums in a way that is joyous, inspiring, relaxing, stress-free, and free from tragedy. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for joining in this video. I will see you very soon. Love you all. Bye for now.